Not only are they not the worst team in history, they're not even the worst team of the last decade. If you don't live under a rock, you've heard that Detroit has had the longest losing streak in NBA history at 28 straight games, a milestone no organization would be proud of, that's for sure. But there are several factors that are not being taken into account. The Pistons are a long way from being a good team. In fact, they are tremendously far from being an average NBA team. However, you have to understand their actual situation and the overall context in the league to understand why they are not able to achieve wins on a regular basis. And yes, I know all of you watching this video are familiar with the concept of tanking, but what I'm going to explain in this video goes much deeper. Because what do we really consider a bad team? It's clear that the number of wins you get is a fundamental factor, but it's also not the only reality. The Clippers during the early season struggled hard to win games, even putting themselves with a record of three wins and seven losses, but everyone knew they were better than that. The reality is there is no better indicator to analyze how good a team is than pure talent. You have to look at individual players to realize the real level a roster can offer. And even then, we are leaving aside important factors such as the system, the coach, or even game philosophies. But if there is one thing for sure, it is that there is at least one team that was much worse. The Philadelphia 76ers of the 2013-2014 season made history for many reasons. The first reason being just like the Pistons, they managed to equal the streak of most consecutive losses with 26 in a row, a record that had stood for only three seasons since it was set by the Cleveland Cavaliers. It was the season after LeBron's first departure and the decision. The second reason being that we are really talking about the team with the least talent in decades. Sam Hinkie was the GM of the franchise at the time, and he really struggled to put together a roster that was both incapable of competing or capable of getting a good position in the draft lottery. The team actually started the season with a roster that was somewhat competitive and had good players at the time, such as Evan Turner, Thaddeus Young, or Spencer Hawes. However, two of them were traded at the trade deadline leaving a roster whose best player was rookie Michael Carter-Williams. The point guard was accompanied by players like James Anderson, Henry Sims, Hollis Thompson, Tony Roten, Byron Mullins, or Jarvis Vernado. Players who were unable to string together two consecutive victories and who were pushed out of the NBA after their time in Philadelphia. But the truth is that during this last decade, the NBA has changed dramatically. To begin with, the Sam Hinkie era and the Sam Presti era exposed the NBA's problem with tanking. This has led to several changes in the current lottery draft system. Teams had to go at least pretend they weren't purposely losing, but with no law to enforce it, GMs like the Sixers tried to maximize their chances, in turn having a tussle with the league that ended up taking his spot. Today, being the worst team is not the most profitable thing to do. Finishing last a decade ago guaranteed you a 25% chance of getting the first pick while today, the three worst teams get an even 14%. And this has caused franchises to not try to be the worst in the entire NBA because of the economic repercussions this brings in terms of merchandising and ticket sales. In addition, the creation of the play-in has increased the chances of average teams to try to reach the playoffs, offering an opportunity that did not exist before. This means that bad teams a decade ago were much worse. And in addition to the importance of finishing last among both conferences, there has been another factor that has made the teams that rank at the bottom of the standings more competitive. The NBA has changed a lot with respect to the style of play. Each time new unique players appear in the draft, offering profiles that have not existed before and that in one way or another break the molds to which we are accustomed. Big men capable of shooting, passing, and dribbling as perimeter players, huge point guards who can defend many positions. The overall talent is increasing in all aspects. And that's precisely the other reason why this season's Detroit Pistons are no worse than those Philadelphia 76ers. This clip corresponds to nothing more and nothing less than a Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Semifinals of 2012. Those Philadelphia 76ers, unlike the ones we have seen in the video, were a good team, especially on defense. Now, look at what defense they run on the NBA's all-time best shooter at the time. With five minutes left in the game, the score was 63-69, figures that could very well be the halftime score of a game today. And no, it is not that the NBA no longer defends as many fans argue. It's that in today's NBA, virtually every player can create his shot. The scoring explosion the league is experiencing is mostly due to the fact that the third shooting guard in a team's rotation
can score a step back three in his defender's face. If he had the green light, of course. No matter how hard defenders try, you can't defend the entire court against five constant threats who can score from virtually anywhere on the hardwood. And the bottom of each team's rotation players? They're better than ever. What this means is that the NBA is a hell for defenses compared to a few years ago. You only have to look at the rosters to see that all the teams have a lot of quality. And those that don't have as much depth suffer the consequences. The Pistons have players who could score 30 points on any given night. The problem is, is that their efficiency would be, logically, less than that of a star. Cade Cunningham is a point forward who should get at least an all-star selection during his career, right? A versatile player capable of running the offense and scoring on his own, which has been the main reason Detroit has been close in some games. Bohan Bogdanovich is another excellent scorer and shooter who is averaging almost 18 points per game in 28 minutes of play. A player who, really, unlike anyone on the infamous 76ers roster, could be in the rotation of a contender. Jalen Duran is a sophomore who has shown good efficiency and represents the type of center who makes a long NBA career. Or even Oscar Thompson, Isaiah Stewart, or Jaden Ivey, who are all under 22 years old and have shown potential to stay in the league for a long time. Pieces much better than ones on what would be considered the worst team in NBA history. And sorry Sixers fans for using your team as an example, but relax, there are many more. The Charlotte Bobcats of the 2011-2012 season finished with a record of seven wins and 59 losses in the lockout shortened season. Among their pieces was a young Kemba Walker who had a modest performance and mostly came off the bench. Besides an aging Corey Maggette, Gerald Henderson, DJ Augustine, and Boris Diaw, they didn't have any players who have gone on to have good NBA careers. I mean, they weren't bad players, but also, in all but Kemba's case, we're talking about players who have been role players at best. Is this team clearly better than the Pistons? I'm sorry to say, but hell no. Or the New Jersey Nets of the 2009-2010 season, who finished with a whopping 12-70 record, a team in which only two players stand out, a very different Brooke Lopez than the one we are used to seeing today, and Devin Harris. Both players who, as offensive references, were not able to offer much. Again, along with some players who, at most, managed to become role players, such as Courtney Lee, Yi Jianlian, Raffer Alston, or Chris Douglas Roberts. So again, we're talking about a team that isn't clearly better than the Detroit Pistons. And this is not new. In fact, we can go all the way back to the 90s to observe more examples. The Denver Nuggets of the 1997-1998 season finished with a record of 11 wins and 71 losses. Their leading scorer, Eric Williams a player who would never again surpass 10 points per game for the rest of his career. That says it all, right? Well, he was accompanied by Johnny Newman, Lafonso Ellis, Corey Alexander, and Bobby Jackson, players that average NBA fans have never heard of and who lived the best years of their career in the Nuggets uniform without achieving much success. So, is this finally the time we have found a team clearly better than the Pistons? The truth is, no. Five years earlier in 1993, the Dallas Mavericks had a season of 13 wins and 69 losses, one of the few teams on this list that featured a player who could end up being an all-star in his career, Jamal Mashburn, who certainly became a good scorer in the NBA. But beyond the forward, Jim Jackson was the only player who managed to have a standout career in the league for years to come. Derek Harper, also a member of that team, was a good point guard for the Mavs, but was also unable to carve out a role of real importance in the seasons following his departure. Finally, this terrible team could actually be a little better in terms of talent than the Detroit Pistons of today. We did it! Worst team ever. No man, that's a statement that can't be said lightly. There have been terrible teams throughout NBA history, but if there's one thing they differ with the Detroit Pistons, it's with the age of their players. With the exception of Bogdanovich and Alec Burks, all of the Pistons' core players are under the age of 24. In fact, Detroit's roster, at 23.7 years old on average, is the youngest in the entire NBA. It's normal that they don't win games. They're just kids. True, not like the OKC kids that are destroying defenses, but the reality is the only thing wrong with the team is that its players need time to figure out what their role is on the court and what they need to do in order to get the most out of their abilities. Something that Monty Williams certainly isn't helping. The coach is a terrible fit for the team and his multi-million dollar contract makes his departure very complicated. Bad news, Piston fans. To put things in context, let's give one last piece of information. If we take the 14 worst seasons in NBA history in winning percentage, three of them belong to teams from the current season. First, the Pistons, 
with their terrible record of three wins and 33 losses. Eighth are the Spurs with a record of five wins and 30 losses, and 14th are the Washington Wizards with their record of six wins and 30 losses. Just another example that the Pistons case is not unique and occurs frequently in today's NBA, and that if any of those clone games they played had ended differently, no one would be talking about this. They've had the misfortune of breaking the record that no team wants to break. They have had the misfortune of losing key players, like Jalen Duran during potential winnable games, and they have had the misfortune of becoming the laughingstock of the entire NBA and world basketball. And mind you, the only ones to blame are themselves. If the Spurs and Wizards have won two and three more games in total, it has been on their own merits, and we are not taking that away from them. But the outrage against a group of young players who are clearly not ready to win games on a regular basis is brutally exaggerated. With another coach, with another system, and with the same players, the picture could be totally different. The Houston Rockets, led by Aimee Adoka, have shown that a team that a priori should not even be in the fight for the play-ins is capable of putting up a fight in one of the strongest Western conferences in history, and all because their coach is doing a good job with a group of players that, according to the bookmakers, was going to win 22 games during this regular season. With 47 games left in the season, they have already won 18. Yeah, DraftKings, take that for data. If there's one thing that I'm sure of, it's that the Detroit Pistons are not the worst team in NBA history in terms of talent. Monty Williams' contract, however, may be the worst in league history for any coach. And that is the real problem.